Yes. Tamam, şükran. So we will be analyzing Honeypot data using security onion and Flare VM. I'm Akum Mahmoud Salih and I am a full-time penetration tester, professionally any. The goal from this talk is that we just want to get a glimpse from the defensive side of cybersecurity. We're going to do a little bit of monitoring, a little bit of investigation, and we're going to see a setup on open source and free tools. Disclaimer, this is not a tutorial on how things should be done. This is a very specific example, and I'm not going to be doing any attacks. I'm saying this because we will see a lot of IPs. So I'm not attacking those. The flow that we're going to move on, عشان بس نكون على نفس الصفحة we will discuss what is a honeypot security onion flare vm then we will talk about what the honeypot that we have contains after that we'll do the analysis then inshallah the Q&A but let's finish these terms real quick what is a honeypot the honeypot ممكن أن يكون system واحد أو مجموعة systems مصممين هم بنية أن they get attacked أو attract attackers security onion it's a Linux distribution designed for network monitoring and much more, but we will not discuss that If you're interested, you can go to securityonion.readthedocs.io. After that, and then a Flare VM. A Flare VM, you can think of it as the Kali Linux of blue teaming, and it's based on Windows. But it's a Linux, sorry, a Windows distribution designed for malware analysts, and it's made by FireEye, which is a big security company. So now that we finished the terms, let's just discuss real quick what the honeypot that we have contains. Let's say that it contains a Windows 2016 server, and this is exposed to the internet. The SMB service is exposed to the internet. So basically, this is what's going to get attacked. Then we have Security Onion, and we're using it to monitor what's happening to this Windows server. That's done via the sensor or sniffer placed in the same network. So this collects data, sends it to Security Onion, then we analyze that. I'm saying this is simplified because this is a part of a, let's say, a bit bigger honeypot. If you want to see the full configuration in deep details, you can just go to my blog, hamoud.github.io. And by the way, this is hosted in Kuwait. Uh, sorry, this is hosted in Kuwait. So attacks that we see, they'll be tar uh, targeted attacks against, against a system in Kuwait. To me, this is interesting. So just some bullet points real quick. We have a Windows server, the SMB service will get attacked, Security Onion will be used to monitor these attacks. Then Flare VM will be used to, for analysis. So let's do this. Do you still see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Cool. So this is Security Onion. This might look familiar, familiar to you because this is actually Cabana, which is a part of, a part of the Elk stack. Elasticsearch, Logstash, Cabana. So, this view... But the other one, but we'll see the demo slide. Demo slide, as I said, I'm going to do it. Hey. I don't have time. Okay. Yes, what about now it shows. Now? Hey. Nice, okay. So, Cabana is what we're looking at here inside of Security Onion. We'll, we are visualizing the data that we have collected. So, Currently, we're viewing 12 hours worth of data. Let's go through this data real quick. We have SMB connections, where they're coming from. So in the last 12 hours, 1,000 connections came from Portugal, then China, then the United States. Let's take a bigger time period, 24 hours. Then we see Cameron. Jumping to first with 1,000 connections. Down here, we can see the IP addresses. Now, this first IP address, it's an internal IP. I'm not interested in this. I'm going to filter it out. We see different IPs. Here, we see the usernames being attempted. Administrator, for user, accounts, administrator. I'm not sure how this is pronounced, but this was used once in the last... 12 hours. Here we have the successful logins. What usernames were used for successful logins? There's one successful login with the username administrator. Over here, it's being visualized in a different way, a bar chart. Okay, let's do something interesting because I don't see anything really interesting here. Let's take seven days worth of data. So we see files downloaded on the machine. 
runtime.exe, iis.dll. Now let's investigate these. So let's move from just analyzing the data, just, sorry, monitoring it, to doing an investigation. Let's filter for this specific data. Then we'll go all the way to the bottom. Let's see where this file came from. It came from this IP and at this time. So 9th, this was a few days ago, 9th of June, came from Indonesia. Now let's say I want to actually take this file and analyze it further. I'll click over here. Security Onion will go and get the stream of packets which contain this file. Then I'll download the pickup file, open it in Wireshark, extract the files to the Barcam folder I created, close this. So now we have the file. Let's view it in the terminal. Okay, so two files, IIS, the DLL, and runtime. These came from the same source. Interesting. Let's see the sizes of these files. IIS, the DLL is 74 bytes. Then we have runtime.exe, it's a bit bigger, six megabytes. Now I want to see the type of these files. I can see a .dll here and a .exe here, but I want to verify the file type because these can be modified easily. So I'll use a simple command file. Then I see the iis.dll file is an ASCII text file, while runtime.exe is actually a portable executable. Now, since this file is a text file, let's just see what it contains. So I'll simply cat the file, copy paste the name, IP addresses. Now you need to know that this was a real attack. This is not me doing a demo. This is the honeypot having malicious files dropped on it. Now I said malicious, but let's verify what these malicious files do and are they really malicious? So what we'll do is take these, move them to Flare VM and analyze them there further. Tell me if you can see my other screen. No, still see the terminal. Okay, let's try this. What about now? Yeah. Thank you. Windows thank you. box? Yes, Windows. Okay. So this is Flare VM. It's based on Windows. It's for malware analysis. I have the two files we just view in Security Onion here. But I changed the naming. I removed the text in the beginning. So we have iis.dll and runtime.exe. So let's do some basic analysis. I'll open runtime.exe in PE Studio, which is a program used for static analysis that is analyzing files without launching them. We see here that this file is a 64-bit executable, and we have a value here, compiler timestamp. This value can be changed, but it's good to take it into consideration if it exists. It tells us when the file was compiled. So we see it was compiled on the 1st of January, 2020. Interesting. Let's go to VirusTotal. Now what VirusTotal is, it's a company that connects to many antivirus vendors and we can use it to consult it on certain files. So here we are consulting it on the runtime.exe. Is it malicious? What do AV companies say? Only nine say that it is not, sorry, only nine say that it is malicious, while the rest say it's clean. We can also visit VirusTotal via the browser, which I've done here. Now I'm not marketing for anybody, but you see many known AV companies say that it is not malicious. Kaspersky, Microsoft, da -da, you get the idea. Now let's verify this. Is this file malicious or not? What we can do is check the strings section. And what, what string does is it just tries to extract strings from the exe file. This is what it does, basically. We see the first entry. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. This is normal in almost any portable executable file, which is Windows based. Let's go down further. We see runtime.exe manifest, PyD, some Python related stuff. So this might have been written in Python, but then compiled to an exe. Py installer does that, I believe. Now PE Studio helps us in checking things that are blacklisted, blacklisted strings. We get an idea of what this file does, sort by MITRE techniques, which are known techniques used by threat actors. 
we see sleep. This might be used to bypass the sandboxes by sleeping for a period of time, maybe six hours, 12 hours, who knows. Now I, keep, I can keep doing this for days, but we can try something else. We can try running this file and see what it does. So I'm gonna start Process Explorer. It's like a task manager, but on steroids, you can say. I'll go down here, close Chrome. Now, I'll do two things. Just hide this away. I know what this file does, I've analyzed it. Not fully, but you'll get an idea now. I'll run it. So let me run it as an administrator. Starts, then closes. Now watch this. I'll go to the Windows directory here. Take this IIS file and drop it in the C Windows directory. Oh, no, no, no. It's just copy, copy, paste. Yes, copy, paste it there. Now run this. And it keeps doing other stuff. Firewalls turned off. Now what it's doing is, I'm just going to kill it. What it's doing is it's connecting to multiple IPs on port 445. And I have a packet capture to show you this. Wireshark. The packet capture and you see this. A lot of IPs. 445, 445. This is the port it's connecting to. I'll just show you the, a different representation of the time. See, within one second, it's connecting to many IPs. And it turned off my firewall and it was deleting certain shares. So what we see here is this file is actually malicious while the AV vendors were saying it is not malicious. Now I'm not like bad mouthing the AV vendors. This is normal because this malware is not old. It's relatively new and they don't have signatures for them. And I did drop it in specific uh, sandboxes, but the issue was I could not deliver the other file, the IIS, the DLL file to the C directory of the sandbox, then run this because this is what this file needed. And that's it, I will end my talk here. I just want to thank uh, Barcamp, Majid and uh, Shema. We still have three more minutes. Three more minutes, then I can do something else if the attendees are interested. I can show you how I knew that it required the, this file to be here. Majid, I think I'm stuck in my, uh, <laughs> in my Flare VM. Uh, control Alt. Control Alt. No, no, not like this. I mean the, oh, actually, nice. Now I can see the chats and other things because I want to know if the attendees are interested in me seeing how I knew that the IIS DL file was required to be in the Windows folder. Was it using strings? What, files? C Windows name the DLL. What is this? No, I knew that it required the IIS file by uh, running the malware and checking which files it's checking. White onions don't make you cry. This one might. I I like that. <laughs> uh, this was scary. Doesn't show anything obvious being done on your PC. It will be really slow. It will be really slow. Your PC will be really slow. It's why I killed it right away. Ah, okay, what files I can answer this by actually showing you. Let me just change my share, okay. So, I'll remove this, is.dll, okay. Throw it on my desktop. Then I'll open procmon64. This is part of the sysinternals suite, pause it. Hope it doesn't crash, it crashes on me a lot. So I'll add a filter here in process monitor, which is procmon. I'll filter specifically by process name and enter runtime.exe.
Okay, let's try to do this quick. How much time I have? Keep going, okay. I'll stop you when it's late. Okay, so now I'll run this after starting Procmon. Okay, so runtime.exe already got stopped. Now I'll filter here by name not found. Include name not found. So here I can see anything that the malware did not find. Uh, registry queries that returned name not found, uh, files it tries to access. And this is where we will find the iis.dll file, which is here. So when we take this file and we drop it there, it finds it. Then for some reason, it just continues. I hope this answers your question. Helmut, how can we? Oh, sorry, my last slide. Wait. Hey. <laughs> yes, contact information is there. Again, thank you, Barcamp. You were really professional. Ihtiram, uh, utansiq, professionalism. I'm amazed. Thank you so much. And this is my Twitter, at ma4j0r. And this is my email, hamoud at corpse.io. Thank you very much, uh, Hamoud. Uh, really appreciate uh, your time and participating for Barcamp. Um, Anybody has questions for Hamoud? I see one. Uh, Hamoud, you want to take this? You want Can you update the Windows OS after installing Flare? I believe, yes, you can. But you have to do it manually. I think it turns off uh, automatic updates. Flare VM is installed via PowerShell script. So you just run the script. Then uh, after that, it will install all the packages on the, sorry, programs on the Windows OS. And after that, you have complete control of the Windows OS. You want to turn off the antivirus, you want to install updates, anything you want. And, if uh, you're interested in a tool called WS, uh, WSUS Offline, uh, you can download all the Windows updates uh, for a specific Windows version, or then deploy it on the machine, but it will install these updates offline. I don't need the Windows update feature. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Mood. حياكم الله ويعطيكم العافية